Hi everyone, my name is Jonathan Silva and I have one question for you. Have you ever used Power Automate to pass through some numerical values, maybe some currency fields or whole numbers that you'd like to potentially send in an email and you just can't get those thousands to come in or anything with uh, a decimal number to show up correctly? Well, luckily for you, within Power Automate, we can very easily format that integer value format that number to be able to display it within the millions, the thousands, the comma separator that we need, the decimal that we need in there to show in our decimal values, uh, especially for currency numbers. So without ado, let's take a look at how we can set up our flow with Power Automate to show those values exactly how we need to see them. So here we are, here is our very, very simple flow to showcase how we can format our whole number values, our integer values, whatever you see coming through. Now for this flow, all we have are two steps. The first is our trigger when an item is created on a SharePoint list, and then we're gonna send an email based on some of the values that have come in from that, that generated item. Now here's the list I have. It's very, very simple, just a uh, SharePoint list I've created uh, for some travel requests here. Every time we get a new travel request, we enter that here within our list, taking some of that data. Now the part that I'm most con concerned about here is this estimated airfare and estimated hotel cost that we're working with. Right now, if you're looking at it from SharePoint, SharePoint automatically takes that numerical value and adds in that dollar sign and also adds in our th a thousand separator for our, you know, our, our value there and in that dot zero zero, right, for our currency value here. That is something that we are not man uh, manually adding in. If I were to look at this last one here, I've just simply typed in the value and it is automatically gonna be adding in that that is additional piece. And it's not anything that's actually carried over when we go to run our flow. In this case, if I go over to this flow and I have a, a run that I've just done, this is the result that I'm getting. If I get that email, it comes in and it looks just like this, where we have the estimated hotel cost in this case, it's just one of the fields that I've, seen, I've uh, captured here. It brings in the number, but it doesn't add in that comma, it doesn't add in the decimal for uh, the, the currency itself. So we have to actually change the way it's been passed through from SharePoint into Power Automate to be able to display it inside of this send an email step. So to get to that, what we're gonna do is just edit that step, edit that one field right here. Okay, that's this estimated hotel cost. This is our whole number value. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that from there. Let me make this nice and bold too as well. And what we'll do is, in order to add that specific value in here, we are gonna use an expression. And the expression we are going to choose this time is called format number. So if I come in here to our expression and type in format, you can see we have format date time, but also format number. And when you choose format number, what we're trying to do is then if I add in my opening parentheses there, is pass through the number value that we want to format and then decide the exact format we want. In fact, we can see that right here, how we want to do it. So we can pass through the number and then designate the format that we wanna show it in. Okay, so the number I wanna pass through here is coming from our dynamic content. So this is gonna be my estimated hotel cost. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. Okay, so we can see that's here in our expression. Okay, format number, there it is. And now what I wanna do, prior to the closing parentheses between that closing square bracket that designates the exact column that we're pulling in for our dynamic content, add in a comma. When we add in the comma, that allows us to move to the next part of our expression here, okay, in the syntax, and that's where we add in the format. Now, in order for the format to be properly captured here for us to utilize, we need to add in a, an apostrophe or a single quote, a tick mark, whatever you like to call it, in order to, to pass in this format. Now, there are a couple different options for us when we pass in our format. We could either use zeros, Okay, 
We could use the pound sign or the hashtag, if you will. Um, we can add commas. We can add a lot of different features in here for us to, to utilize. What I like to do is use that, that hashtag, that pound sign um, as much as possible because unlike the zero, where the zero is just a digital placeholder, a digit placeholder for us to utilize, the hashtag pound sign is still the same thing, a digit placeholder, but it allows us to skip any leading zeros. So it doesn't matter how many, you know, how much we're passing through, it will skip that leading zero and showcase the value exactly the same way that we want it each and every time. So for this one, I'm gonna put it to the million separator for, for the comma there, just in case maybe we have something like a, that costs a million dollars that we wanna pass through. So in that case, I'll do three comma, there's our separator, I'll do three more. Okay, this is our thousand separator. I'll do three more. And then if you add in a decimal, zero, zero, what that's allowing us to do is add in those the, the, that decimal four and in the, the placeholder for those digits. So now I have to have a two digit number here for our decimal, right? If it's carrying that from our currency or if we're going to two decimal places, we're gonna carry that each and every single time. If there's nothing there within the actual value, it will do dot zero zero, right? It'll give us just a zero zero there anyway. Okay, so just in case we ever get that. Now, if there's any type of any uh, time we ever wanna use um, exponential notation, we're gonna add in the letter E. Okay, we can use um, you know a selection separator of a semicolon if we wanna go from one section to the next. All of these different things, if we wanna add in a, a percent, the percent sign will allow us to get to that. All these little pieces of elements that we can add in will allow us to view that specific value in the exact way we want it. So all I need to do now that I have that displayed here, you can just hit okay. And now you can see we have our format number added in. I'm gonna go ahead and make this bold as well. Make sure it is bold. Looks like it was already. And then we'll save and test this once again to see the difference between the two emails. And here's our test. And we'll do a manual test. And actually, you know what? And here's our test. We'll go ahead and use an automatic test with that recently used trigger. So we're just gonna see the exact same email to show them up side by side. Hit test, and here it comes. All right, the flow has been successful. I'm gonna take a look at my email. And now here is our new value. So now what you'll see is we are getting that comma separator for the thousand. We also have the decimal. We carrying the two digits there because we use dot zero zero in this case so that it does allow us to show that even if I don't have a decimal number. And that's a direct comparison to the one we got earlier, which doesn't carry that. So you can see the two side by side in this case. So you can see there it is. We are looking at one with the thousand separator, one with, without. That's exactly what I'd like to have in this case to make things much much better for us moving forward. Thanks for joining with this video, taking a look at how we can use the format number function here inside of Power Automate with our workflow definition language to display our whole numbers, our values with a comma separator for the thousands, for the millions, add in that uh, placeholder for our uh, currency if we're using any type of sense or having you know any decimal numbers to be able to pass through and to get the exact output we want every single time. Stay tuned for some future videos as we continue to work with some of this workflow definition language inside of Power Automate and come up with some great use cases and examples for you as you continue your learning process.